Let's say we have a box with mass m on an incline. For an incline plane, we use the angle here as the angle of the incline. So when the angle is zero, it is a horizontal plane. We will start with a frictionless incline, and we will find the acceleration of the box and every force that acts on the box. So again, we will follow the problem-solving procedures. On this slippery incline, the box is going to accelerate down the incline this way. Next, we draw the force diagram. In this case, I like to draw the force diagram right on the box. So this dot is what I will use. The box has this uh, non-contact force, mg. It is touching a contact surface. That contact surface does not give us friction, but there is normal force. Which way do you think normal force goes? Normal force is always a pushing force. So the box gets pushed, and the pushing normal force is perpendicular to the contact surface. So the normal force will be slanted like this perpendicular to the contact surface. It's not touching anything else, so we're done with the force diagram. It's a two-dimensional case, so we have to look at one dimension at a time. If we separate things into horizontal and the vertical direction, we would have to find components for the slanted vectors. We have two slanted vectors in this coordinate system. So we'll have to make a rectangle here. And that's the vertical component, the horizontal component. Make a com rectangle over here. Horizontal component, vertical component. So we have to do the cosine sign, find the components, and follow the procedures, and we will be able to find what we want. It's just that uh, it is not very convenient. We do have other choices. One of the other choices is, uh, instead of using an upright coordinate system like this, we can tilt our coordinate system to line up with the inclined plane. So let's see. If we tilt our coordinate system this way, then in this coordinate system, A, the acceleration, is completely in the x direction. The normal force is completely in the y direction. But mg is the one that is slanted in this coordinate system, which means we'll have to find the x component and the y component of the gravitational force mg. So we'll have to make a rectangle. Now our rectangle will have to line up with this coordinate system. So the rectangle will have to go like this x direction, y direction. And here, that's our rectangle. This is our x component of the mg, the y component of our mg, like that. If you are not used to drawing slanted rectangle like this, you can also just tilt your paper until this inclined surface look horizontal to you. And then you draw the rectangle here. That's the x component, the y component. You can draw that and then tilt it back. So you get the same thing. I know some people like to turn their force diagram and draw like this. They make the normal force is in the y direction, so they draw the normal force that way. The mg, after you turn it, it's going to be like this. I personally do not recommend that. This is what I do. So let's find these components. This angle here is theta, and if I make this here, that will be a right triangle right here. 
since uh, this is 90 degrees, that means these two angles add together must be 90 degrees. So if this angle here is theta, that angle there would be 90 degrees minus theta. This angle here would be the same 90 degrees minus theta. And since these two angles add together to be 90 degrees, if this one is 90 minus theta, then this angle here would be theta. So the y component of the mg would be the mg adjacent to the angle theta, so it's a cosine theta. Then of course the other one would be the mg sine theta. Now, every time you see an incline problem, you can go through the trouble to figure out the angles and then the components. I usually like to just draw my picture as carefully as possible, and I exaggerate the angles. I make angles less than 45 degrees very small. So when I see a small angle right here, I know it must be theta. Because we use this a lot, I also actually memorize that the component of the mg that goes down the incline is mg sine theta. And the component that is perpendicular to the incline is mg cosine theta. You can decide what you'd like to do. Okay, so we have the components. Let's move on to the force equation. So net force equals to ma, and we're going to separate the x and y. In the x direction, there is only the component mg sine theta. So the net force is uh, mg sine theta, and that equals to the m times a. So the mass cancels. We get the acceleration, that is uh, g sine theta. And then let's look at the y direction. For the y direction, the acceleration would be zero. The acceleration is completed in the x direction, no y component. That means the upward force and the downward force, they must be equal. So the normal force must equal to the mg cosine theta. So we have the acceleration. We have the normal force acting on the block, and the, of course, the gravity is the mg. Here I have an incline at 30 degrees, and this low friction cart weighing about 15.8 newtons. So to lift this cart straight up at a constant velocity, no acceleration, I have to exert 15.8 newtons to overcome the mg. However, if I'm pulling it up along this incline, I do not have to overcome mg. I just have to overcome mg's component along and down this incline, the mg sine theta. Since sine 30 degrees is one half, mg sine theta for this part would be about half of the 15.8 newtons, which is 7.9 newtons. So let's see. Right? That's why ramps can be good to have when, say, moving heavy things onto a high truck bed. Instead of having to exert mg to lift the heavy weight, we just have to exert mg sine theta along the incline. And mg sine theta is less than mg. So we get to save force with the ramp. Now let's look at an incline situation when there is friction. Let's say after released from rest, this box with mass m is sliding down the incline. The angle of the incline is theta the coefficient of kinetic friction between the box and the incline is mu k. See if you can find the acceleration of the box.
Let's follow the problem solving procedures. The box is uh, accelerating down the incline. The acceleration goes down the incline and the, I'm going to use the slanted coordinate system. The incline direction is the x and the other one is the y. And then I'm going to draw the force diagram. I have the non-contact force mg going straight down. The box is touching the incline, a contact surface that can give you normal force and friction. The normal force is uh, pushing on the box and perpendicular to the incline so the normal force goes that way. There is friction now. Since the box is sliding down the incline, the friction must go against the sliding motion up the incline. In this coordinate system, normal force is completely in the y direction, friction is completely in the x direction. The mg is the slanted one in this coordinate system. So we have to make our rectangle to find the mg's component. So I'm going to make a rectangle. One side is along the incline. The other side is perpendicular to the incline. And then I just have to extend them enough to make this rectangle. So this is the x component of the mg. That's the y component of the mg. Now if I had drawn it very carefully, then this small angle is the theta. That means this slim angle here is the theta. So the y component is adjacent to the angle. That's the mg cosine theta. And then, of course, the other one will have to be the mg sine theta. So here we have the components. Then we can write our net force equals to ma. We can do the x direction and the y direction separately. Now, because I have friction, that means uh, I need to find the friction using the normal force. So it can be convenient for me to do the y direction first. So I'm going to do the y direction first. The acceleration is completed in the x direction, no y component. So in the y direction, the acceleration is zero. And that means the upward force and the downward force, they must be equal. The normal force cancels with the mg cosine theta. So the normal force for this box on the incline equals to the mg cosine theta. And then look at the x direction. For the x direction, the acceleration goes that way, so the mg sine theta is bigger than the friction. So the net force is the bigger side minus the smaller side. mg sine theta minus the friction equals to ma. And then, of course, the friction is mu k times the normal force. Mu k is given, and we just found the normal force, so we can plug in the Mu, mu k times the normal force for friction. So friction is uh, mu k times the normal force. And I'm going to plug it in. That means uh, mg sine theta minus mu k times the friction. mg cosine theta would equal to n a. We got three terms here. Every single term has the mass, so I can cancel the mass. Because if I just uh, divide by mass on both sides, every single term, after you divide it by mass, you get the mass canceled. That gives you the acceleration, which is g sine theta minus mu k times g cosine theta.